All right. What's going on? It's both for Tuesdays. Is it? Yeah, it's been a while. It's Wednesday. Viewers wanted to know about frame geometry. How do I choose the right frame geometry? So to answer the question, you've got to really think about what the pitfalls of choosing a bike are. I think most people treat frame geometry as all bikes are kind of the same, whereas some bikes are lower at the front end, longer in the reach than, than others are. The most common issue we come across is we see guys riding bikes that are far too aggressive for them. Consider this, that you know, if you've got like a bike like a Handel Cat 12 or any kind of race orientated bike, you've got to think about the fact that the bike's designed around a 20 year old athlete who cycles hundreds of kilometers a week. And you know, they've got high levels of strength, flexibility, they're able to tolerate a certain position. Most consumers don't do anywhere near the same amount of mileage. They don't have the same level of strength, flexibility, range of motion, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, equally, they're not paid to do it. And then, you know, they, they go and buy a bike like that, which is, you know, relatively aggressive, handles well, but it's relatively aggressive, but then they come to me and complain why the back hurts. It's horses for courses, you can't, when, when you consider that people who buy bikes are generally speaking age 35 to 60 instead of the desk all day, you've got to be a lot more conservative about the types of position you put these people in. People think they want like a long and low aggressive riding position, but they can't tolerate it. We found this through pressure mapping, through video analysis, through um, engagement with our customers, that you know, people don't like it. When, when we bring the handlebars close to them and bring them up, it's more comfortable. This is why we have the ethos of you have a bike fit first, and then you buy a bike. I keep having guys coming into me say, oh, you know, I'm gonna go and buy a bike and then I'm gonna bring it to you to be fitted. And it's, just, it's completely the wrong way around to do it. You can't understand whether a bike's right for you unless you go through a bike fit first. That's a, that's a fact. Say you've had a bike fit done. Guy might have recommended a couple of frames, but you're in a, in a new bike shop. What do you want to look for? You're after something with a fairly relaxed geometry. What are you gonna look for? Head tube, right? Looks can be deceiving. So when you consider something like Trek Damani, for example, one of the means of uh, increasing the stack, which is the vertical distance from the center of the bottom bracket to the top of the head tube, they didn't just increase the length of the head tube, which is the vertical tube that the fork inserts into, that should drop the whole bottom bracket height, which not only increased the stack, but actually made it much more uh, stable. So it's actually really, really good for, for a new cyclist. Um, I think, Generally speaking, my recommendation to newer riders, don't buy a race bike. They might be exotic and they might look the nuts, but frankly, most people aren't adept enough at riding a bike in order to ride a bike like that. It's like learning to drive and then go buying a Formula One car. It's the same sort of thing. You just wouldn't do it because it, well, no one buys a Formula One car, but you know what I mean. If you go and buy a high performance car, you just wouldn't do it because you need to understand actually the mechanics of, of driving a car first. It's kind of the same with a bike. You know, racing bikes, not this. Racing bikes are, you know, they, they, they're designed for racing. So it kind of, you've got to kind of think about it in, in the, what are you going to use the thing for? Are you going to race it? Yeah, in that case, buy a race bike. It's going to be light, it's going to be stiff, it's going to turn on a dime. But if you're not, you know, maybe consider an endurance bike. Endurance bikes generally are much better suited to consumers. They're more relaxed, they're easier to ride, they're more stable, they're more comfortable generally have better tire clearances. One thing I would say about endurance bikes, and this is kind of what leads to the, 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 the custom conversation in here, is that most endurance bikes are pretty benign. They're a bit boring to ride, they're a bit mundane, because that all of that stability that I was talking about can be misconstrued as just, you know, it, it's dull. And that's why a lot of people like riding race bikes, because they're lively and this, that, and the other. When you buy a bike like this, this compromise. This compromise on how it looks, how it rides, or how it fits, the third usually being the, the first compromise. When I say compromise, I'm talking about full spaces under the stem, short stems in order to get the fit right, or in, or in order to make it comfortable. I mean, this is a pretty elitist statement, but if you have to fit spaces, a load of spaces to your bike in order to make it comfortable, it doesn't fit you. Bike manufacturers do not design bikes with spaces underneath the stem because that, that's basically intended to allow you to customize the fit of the bike. Think about it like this. You're taking the bike outside of the realms of where, it was intend, where, it's, where its intended design um, was. So, and the same can be said for stems. If you're putting like 80, 90 mil stems on a, on a, you know, on a big bike, for example, um, again, you're taking the contact points from outside of the realms of where they were intended. Uh, and that's gonna have handling ramifications. It's really, really easy to make a bike fit someone. It's super easy, you know, you put a 60 millimeter stem on the thing, but it's not gonna ride very well, is it? It's a lot, lot harder to get a bike that fits 
and to make it ride well. And that's really where that's really where custom comes in. A bike that fits you will go around corners better, simply put. What if you can't afford custom and you do want something that's relaxed? What sort of bike? I, I'm very, very uh, understanding the fact that not everyone can afford custom. Uh, I think generally speaking, endurance orientated bikes tend to work a lot, lot better. As we, as we referenced earlier, um, endurance bikes tend to work a lot, lot better than, than race bikes from a, from a consumer perspective. I mean, Villiers do, or is it the NDR? Yeah, they do an NDR, which looks very similar to this, yeah. but actually has way higher head tube. Yeah. A little kink in the top yeah, tube, yeah, which yeah. is cool. They do relaxed relaxed do, do a 765, Canada will do a Synapse, Trek to Marni, Specialized Roubaix, if you want the boingy front end. The Villiers um, NDR actually has a little suspension like in the back. Bit. Yeah, it's got an elastomer system in the back of it, hasn't it? These bikes are getting, they're so much better than they used to be. I mean, Trek used to make a bike called the Pilot, and the head tube looked like this. On 52. <laughs> it was, the video, you know, it was ridiculous. And these bikes were all really, really lofty, but I think a lot of this stems from, you know, poor and outdated bike fitting techniques. Mm. I mean, I know, I, I've certainly looked at a lot of bikes over the years where, a lot of custom bikes where the head tubes are really, really tall, but that has come about as a result of saddle heights being too high, which pitches the rider into the front of the bike, so the fitter would bring the front end up, in a, as a means of alleviating that. I actually find myself lowering people as much as I do raising them in, at the front end. So, you know, I can't stress how important getting a fit is first. It, it really, you've got to do a bike fit first and then buy a bike. Use that as a means of taking the guesswork out of the equation rather than just simply going, you know, oh, there's that canyon. I like the look of it, I'll go and buy it. Half of which go back after they've been fitted here um, because, you know, they're super long, super low. This is it. Might get a bike fit. <laughs> Do you know anyone? Might try Pearson's.